You are now listening to a message from Eka Christian Center. Get set to be at the fire. God has blessed you. What? Uh huh. It says, Let my life Lord continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained what? Angels on the Now he's talking and he's speaking from the scriptures. Is that correct? Because we have examples in the scriptures where people entertain angels, all right, on a race. It now says, remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed on the fire, but all mongers and adulterous God will judge. Now, this is where we're going. Verse 5 says what? Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your Conversation. The word conversation here is an astrophe. It's talking about behavior, conduct. All right? Conduct. It says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Okay? Now, why is covetousness an important discourse when we're talking about faith? Because one of the greatest hindrances to people walking in faith is actually self preservation. Self-preservation, all right? Always wanting to say, if I trust God, how will it happen? If I, if I do what God says, how will it happen? How do I know that that which, all right, I am believing God for will come to pass? So you find that they take decisions. Many people make decisions that are in the interest of self-preservation. And self-preservation is covetousness. <laughs> it is covetousness. So let your conduct... Be without covetousness. He now says, and be what? And be what? Church. And be what? Content with such things as ye have. Mm. For he had said. Now notice. We are to ensure our conduct is without covetousness, number one. Then we are to be content in such things as we have. Why? Next verse is, for... He had said. What did he say? I will never what? I will never what? Leave thee, nor what? Forsake thee. So that means the reason for my contentment, my contentment is this. The reason for my contentment, the reason for my putting up covetousness is what God has said. Now, what has God said? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Which means the abiding presence of God is the philosophy or the motivation for my contentment. Because of the abiding presence of God, I will never lack anything that I need. Glory to God. Because of the abiding presence of God, I will or should never get covetous because I know all I need, he will provide. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. He says, be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now verse 6, he says what? So that we may what? Boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So he had said, all right, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that I may boldly say the Lord is my helper. Why must I not be covetous? Why must I be content? Because God has said he will never leave me. He is always with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And therefore, based on that understanding, I declare the Lord is my helper. So because the Lord is my helper, I have all I need. But there's a principle I want us to see in Hebrews chapter 13. It is that the basis of our confessions of faith is what God has said. Remember that. The basis of our confessions of faith is what God has said. Faith confession is declaring with your mouth what God has said with his mouth. Faith confession is declaring with your mouth what God has said with his mouth. Remember we said in the series we just wrapped up, 
That is it is, is it what, what which, which series did you just finish again? It's faith now. <laughs> Good. Is it because I said that faith is not wishful thinking? Faith is not positive thinking. Faith is not optimism. Faith is what? Re echoing what God has said. We also said faith is the response of the human spirit to the word of God. What is that response? It is a word response. We respond with our spirit to what God has said to our spirits. Glory to God. I said glory to God. We respond with our spirit, all right, to what God has said to our spirit. So faith begins and terminates with the word of God. Faith begins and terminates where the will of God is known. Without the word, there can be no faith. 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 Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So there are two, you know, aspects to this. It means that we must labor to find out what he has said. For we cannot boldly say what we are ignorant that he has said. We have to labor to find out what has he said. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. What does he say? He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. All right? Let the word. So we are to let the word dwell. We are to mingle with the word of God. We are to come into contact with that revelation. Hallelujah. We are to discover what he has said. We are to discover the will of God. You know, many times, what this requires, it may require some time of separation. It may require some time of personal retreat. It may require maybe you get some books and some tapes and go on a fast and separate yourself in a room and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen. Discovering the will of God, it is not something you live in the realm of mental engagement. Mental engagement is not enough in discovering the will of God. You discover the will of God with your spirit. That means you take or receive the word of God with your spirit man. All right? It is when the word of God has been acquiesced by your spirit man. When the spirit man, your spirit man has taken possession of that word, then he begins to produce results, all right, in your life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So the first step is discovery of the will of God. What has God said? Now, based on a discovery of what God has said in the word, you will now boldly see. Turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Let me show you something. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible tells us that in the armor of the Christian, there is an offensive weapon. <laughs> I'm a bit of stuff. I don't want to just remind you of this stuff. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I heard some people say that, oh, in the armor of the Christian, described in Ephesians chapter 6, that notice that there is no covering for the back. Have you ever heard that? That there's no covering for the what? For the back. I don't know why people say, oh, so don't, is it don't turn your back, or is it a teaching on pride and all that? Let me tell you something. All those things, it's not, it's not correct. The breastplate of righteousness, it covers both the back and the words and the front. Have you ever seen a soldier when they wear breastplate in Roman times, in all these movies, that is only their front it covers. No. It covers the front and the back. Yes. The helmet does not just cover the, the, the head. It covers the back of the head too. Glory to God. So the, the armor of the Christian, it covers every part of him. Glory to God. Back to front to left to right covers everything. The weapons of our warfare. Well, the tool of offense is the word of God. Like Ephesians 6. Look at it. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Hmm. It is not the exercises of spiritual, it's not spiritual exercises that you do in church that will benefit you. Spiritual exercises that you do in church, they are important, they are good, but they are supposed to be a precursor to the real thing. They are supposed to ignite the real thing in you. Priestly activities in the public space of local, the local church is supposed to instigate priestly activities in your private space. It's supposed to cause you to do, so for example, when we come and maybe we have prayer stretch where we pray for six hours or 12 hours, 
What that's supposed to do is to get you to a place where you are inspired to at least do three hours of praying every single day. Are you seeing what I'm saying? When we come together and we study the Word of God in a local church like this, it's so, so that it gets you to study the Word of God by yourself, privately. Listen to me. It is, we only meet on Sundays and Wednesdays, and we have prayer meetings every other day, and we put our devotionals. It is what you do every single day. It is what you apply consistently that we work. Glory to God. It is not what you apply occasionally. It is what you apply consistently. Praise the Lord. Now, Ephesians chapter 6. Look at this quickly. Ephesians, Philippians. I mean, when you open a Bible a book, you sing that song in your head. Corinne, Corinne. Those people that went to Sunday school. <laughs> in verse 10, Ephesians 6, it says what? Finally, my brethren, be what? Be strong in the Lord. Hmm. Be what? Strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. So that means some people can be, you can be weak in the Lord. It is possible to be weak in the Lord. He says be strong in the Lord. So it is a command to be strong. So we have a responsibility to be what? To be what? To be strong. He says be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He now says next words. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the what? The wiles of the devil. So, if you don't put on the old armor of God, will you be able to stand against the wires of the devil? No. No. He said, put it on so you'll be able to stand. Hallelujah. Then, where I'm going now, okay, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in what? In high places. So, that means we are in a conflict. There is a spiritual conflict. We are in a conflict with wicked forces. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We are in a conflict with wicked forces, wicked spirits. If you look at the book of Daniel, the Bible lets us understand that Daniel had asked for something. The moment he asked, God answered. But Daniel did not see the manifestation of what he had asked, didn't get a manifestation of the answer. Why? Because in the territory where he was, there was a wicked spirit, a prince that was there. Who understood that if Daniel's prayer was answered, the result would have been that there would be a change of authority in his territory. He would lose his authority and another prince will come and take over his position. Many people don't understand that. That the result of Daniel's prayer was that the prince of Persia was dethroned and the prince of Grecia took his place. And the prince of Persia was going to fight that. So he fought and we stood the angel. So there are many things that, you know, manifestations that you want to see. You have already declared, I'm saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I received this. But the challenge is in that in the earth realm, all right? In the earth realm, you have wicked spirits obstructing, hallelujah, obstructing, obstructing, messing relationships up, all right? You, you can find that you have asked God for something, and the conduit through which it will come, a relationship, friendships, or family, or even a boss, or someone you have worked with, but the enemy has gone and soiled it and messed those relationships up, such that they cannot be effective channels, hallelujah. We get spirit. It says we are in a conflict with principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. So what does it now say we need to be able to, you know, handle this conflict? Look at what it says next. It says, hallelujah, wherefore take unto you the word, all armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having all done to stand. So that means there are many Christians that, well, by what Paul is saying, are falling. For if he tells us to take this unto us, glory to God, I heard some people say things like, glory to God. Oh, no, Paul was just trying to inform us of what we already have. You understand? So it's not saying you should take something on. It's already, you are, it's already on you. Come on now. Oh. Glory to God. I can read in English and I can read in Greek. Glory to God. 
That's not what he's saying. Glory to God. Take unto you, Catalambano. All right? He's talking about taking something upon. He's talking about an active action. It's not adjectiva. He says, take up, take it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's what, like when he says, put on the new man. You are a new man. Yet he says, put on the new man. So that means there is an active participation required in manifesting the new man. It's not passive, it's active. So, also where it comes to the weapons of our warfare. Glory to God. Look what he says. He says, all right, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able. Everybody say, may be able. Say, may be able. Say, may be able. So we stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt with what? With truth. The word truth there is Altia. Altia means revelation. That's reality. Reality. Having your loins girt with reality. Praise God. Reality. The reality of God's word. Your loins. Why is your loins important? Because if your loins are not guarded, your nakedness will be exposed. The loins guard with truth, reality. Amen. The next, what does he say? What does he say next? Having on the breastplate of righteousness. What's the breastplate of righteousness? Understanding that, all right, the righteousness of God has been given to you as a gift. Because you cannot confront Satan with an unrighteousness consciousness. You cannot confront Satan with sin consciousness. He will deal with you. Glory to God. He will mess you up. You cannot do it. You have to have the breastplate of righteousness. Having the breastplate of righteousness means to be full of the meditations concerning your right standing with God. Full of, full of meditations of your right standing in God. Hallelujah. You are always saying, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the manifestation of his righteousness. Hallelujah. 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 My righteousness is of God. It is not of me. I stand before God, perfect and complete, in Christ Jesus, not in myself. Hallelujah. You have to be full of that consciousness. It must be because you are going to have circumstances and situations that will come against you to question your standing in Christ. The devil will remind you of all your sins, making you forget that your righteousness is independent of your performance. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because that's what Jesus Christ made you. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says. He that knew no sin, right, became sin for us. Are we there? Second Corinthians 5, 21. What does it say? One to go, it says, For he had made him to be what? Sin for us. Who what? Knew no sin. That we might be what? Made the righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Say this with me three times. I am. Louder. I am. The righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Again. You don't sound as though you are boldly. and I am. The righteousness of God. Do you know that is how you put it on? The breastplate of righteousness. By agreeing that you are. Glory to God. By filling your heart and your thoughts with the truth that you are, glory to God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He that knew no sin became sin for me. Hallelujah. I am complete in Christ Jesus. I am perfect in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
I am perfect in Christ Jesus. Oh, you say, oh, you know, the reason why I can't get the job or get funding is because I, I had one girlfriend like that and we had committed fornication. Oh, you know, the reason why this is happening is about one sin I committed 10 years ago. Oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, you know. Shut up. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Your sins have been forgiven. Past, present, future, under the blood. All your sins were in the future when Jesus died. Glory to God. He is not going to re-die every, every time you sin. So when you stand before life challenges, life contradictions, you must stand assured, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, something that happened to me at work. I always tell you about what happened at work so you get it. That I'm not just talking about things that apply to church. Because some people think this is church. We just come to be saying this inside church because it's a church. You understand know what I'm saying? You be like, no. Mm -mm. I mean, this bank, this is, Senator Brown came up with one policy that held up some of my transactions. I prayed, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, this is what you need to do. Carried it out. Pursued it. I chased everybody in the bank. Every day, everywhere. Ah, they felt that this guy wants something. You know. After we did it and everything was done, my boss said, ah, I like you. Ah, I said, I, I like you. When you want to get something done, you are tunnel vision. You pursue it till it's done. So I don't know whether it's because you are a general overseer of a church, but I just like that about you. Let me tell you something. Your Christianity must get to a point where they are pointing to it as the reason for your efficiency at work. Until your spirituality is translated into productivity in the marketplace, you have not started. The Jesus in you that prophesies through you, the Jesus in you that heals the sick through you must be the same Jesus that makes you productive at work. That faith you said that you have, that faith you are citing everywhere, it must be productive everywhere. Hallelujah. It must be seen everywhere. The Bible says that no man lights a candle and put it under a bushel. Hallelujah. No man. Hallelujah. It must be seen. Let your light so shine before men. So that spirituality that you have and you are learning, it must manifest in canal places. It must manifest in worldly places. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. Amen. Now let's continue. It says, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's what? Preaching the gospel. Verse 16. Everybody says, above all, Church now, above all, taking the shield of faith, uh -huh, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It means the wicked will fire their darts. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, there are different kinds of fiery darts. There are different kinds of things the wicked fires. That's the devil fires. Some of it is accusation. Oh, some folks don't understand the power of accusation. The power of accusation. Accusations of the devil that comes out of the lips of men makes you lose out on opportunities you never were even aware where I've been opened about you. Hallelujah. Somebody is discussing somewhere far away. Oh, we are looking for somebody that can do this. And somebody mentioned this name. And they mentioned your name. They mentioned your name. Somebody that is in the room now says, oh, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, there's a, but I don't think we should go that way. Because and brings a voice of accusation against you. And they move on from your name. Never underestimate the power 
of accusation. Fiery darts of the wicked. Fiery darts of the wicked is not just witches and wizards and all those things. No. It's words. Negative words. Negative words that turn the mind of people against instead of turning it for. Negative words. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Accusations. Accusations. The Bible says with the shield of what? Of faith, we are able to what? Quench it. We are able to put it out. Now listen. The shield of faith works via the principles of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me get up. You know, somebody has put in a, a request for investment of maybe one billion naira. You know, or even 10 million. Let me use a small number. No, let's, you guys are billionaires, so I'm going to be using big, big money. One billion. Hallelujah. Eh? One, are, one, are you comfortable with the number? You are very comfortable. Exactly. One billion. Not one billion. Eh? Glory to God. But someone now says, ah, one billion? Ah, he has lost 500 million. Check it. Check it. His company is a sinking hole. That voice of accusation kills the interest of investing one billion. Glory to God. Guys, have you seen something when people are, there's a bad report about a company? Have you noticed a bad report about a company? Yeah, those bad reports is voice of accusation. Voice of accusation. People begin to say negative things. Then because of the negative things people are saying, the people, the masses that wanted to patronize that business are making decisions. Are you following? About it. That decision that they are taking about that noise is costing that business revenue. That's the power of accusation. Glory to God. Many times when Satan wants to fight a man, it's not really witches and wizards he will use. What he will do is that he will cause a voice of accusation to be noised abroad. So when that voice of accusation is noised abroad, and a lot of people hear it, he publishes it, when those people hear it, do you know what they do? They now begin to take negative steps towards the person who has been accused. Glory to God. Now, when that person has now been accused, you now find out that the people that were running towards that person will begin to turn their back towards that person. And people are doors to opportunities. The change in a man's life, the change in, 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 in seasons are people. 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 A relationship. I'm not going to love relationship. But a relationship can be the difference between farming, all right, and plenty. People. So what they will bring, it brings down noise of accusation. People turn their back on that person. And though the resources and the opportunities are available, this person does not see it. The Bible says with the shield of faith, we quench it. Glory to God. Same thing with the church. When the devil raises a voice, voice of accusation against the church, you will find out that though they are doing wonderful things in the church, what people are hearing outside is negative. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll tell you something. Be, listen to me. We have to be very prayerful. And one of the things you have to learn to do in the place of prayer is shooting down the voice of accusation. Shooting down. You say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I shoot down any voice of accusation against my career, against my business, against my ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. I command any cloud of negative, judgmental accusation to disappear. I'm telling you, you have to pray that way. Someone, I was talking to my friend, Pastor Dio. Pastor Dio said, Pastor Femi, he said what? He said, do you know you said something one time? As, because what I told him was that many of these preachers who are in the Christocentric circle, all right, who come out with doctrinal gaps and say stuff, you know, that are, they cannot prove from the Bible, are actually putting some of us who are very careful with how we put things out, in matter because everybody assumes we are together. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Because the moment you say eternal salvation, at least if you call five people in this country, you will mention Pastor Femi Olale. Do you understand? Because the amount of things I've put out and things like that, I've been doing this for a very long time. So they will now say, ah, Femi Olale, one of those people that say, after you see Jesus, you carry your salvation, you can live anyhow you like. Is that what I teach? No. But because, you know, long pause, you now said that now, that because I told him that they don't know what damage they are doing because they are actually causing everybody that, you know, to lose opportunity, to lose goodwill. Because there's a noise of accusation and slander that is against people in that group. He said, Pastor, I didn't understand what you were saying. He said that it was not until sometime um, um, recently that I put up a post, you know, speaking against some things. That somebody from Kaduna saw it. I said, ah, but I thought this guy was with them. Great starts to him. He said, ah, I saw a post by your friend. He said, I didn't know that, you know, that you people are not, everybody in that, this is not saying those, you know, some people are actually sticking with the rules of Bible interpretation. Yeah, he said, yes. He said, ah, no, we are not on this thing, no. We have been trying to correct some of these things, so. He said, yeah, I didn't know. And on the spot, he told him that somebody is going to be traveling to a city. That person has connects all around Europe for ministry. Praise the Lord. And connected him to that person. And that person has been helping him. Ha. Don't underestimate what voice of accusation can do. Don't underestimate it. You will just find out that you're born. Why is it not, why are things not moving? Why are doors not opening? It's not because God has not opened the door. It's men that have closed it. Because of what they have heard. They are afraid. They've heard something somewhere. Glory to God. You are a fine girl. You, it's fine. You are fine. You didn't kill anybody. You just know how to be fine. You went for an interview and you were just like that. You know, you are, in Congo. You are not sleeping with anybody. You are just fine. You made your hair. You look beautiful. You have said your morning prayers, Iskobobo, Iskobobo, Father, Amen. You landed there for interview. The CEO's wife happened to be in the building. And she saw how fine you are. Glory to God. After I finished the interview, everybody have said they've given you a job. You, you didn't plan to, you are not even working with the CEO. But the wife now comes and says, I saw one girl like this. I found out her name. I don't look. I will fight you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm serious. Those kind of things have happened. Glory to God. Voice of accusation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Voice of accusation. The Bible says it is with the shield of faith. Every believer must have a first shield of faith that they unleash in their vicinity. How do we do it? How do we unleash a first field of it? It's daily, every day. There are certain things you must do in terms of prayer, in terms of prophecy, in terms of confessing the word. You must do it every single day. Listen, it is not the faith that you have that will help you. It's the faith you use. Any authority that is unutilized, it will be as though you have no authority. Authority unused is authority that does not exist. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So how? Look at what he says here. Next one. He says what? Take the element of salvation and the what? And the what? And the what? Sword of the spirit, which is the what? Word of God. That word there is rema. 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 Rema is different from Logos. Logos is speaking of the, um, the full comprehension. Logos is talking about the uh, full explanation. Rema is talking about a portion. You know, it's just, you know, a word, a phrase. Hallelujah. A phrase. So when he's talking about the sword of the spirit, he's talking about portions of the logos. Portions of the written word that are quickened inside of you, which comes out of your mouth. 
like what we read in Hebrews chapter 13, where he says what? For the Lord has said, I will not leave you, nor what? So that I may what? Boldly. So that boldly saying, what I am boldly saying is the rema. What is coming out of my mouth? He says it is a sword of the spirits. Ah, yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sword of the spirits. It's quickened inside. Quickened. You find your, it's quickened. The word is bubbling forth. It's bubbling forth. You are asked to come out of your mouth. <laughs> glory to God. Time is fast, but you know, this first service is short. I was telling my wife on Friday. Was it Friday? Yeah, I think it was Friday. Friday night, <laughs> you know, you, in my line of work, you can't do my line of work without regular spiritual attacks. Glory to God. Mm. You understand? Regular spiritual attacks. Sometimes the Lord allows it to just make you, you know, so that you have, you know, as a soldier, there must be some times where you, you know, end time to battle to be fit. Are you, are you with me? Uh, if you are not, no fight, no listen, there's no skill acquisition. <laughs> it's some nice, you know, it's necessary. It's very, very good. So ah, I was sleeping. So, ah, sleeping? All of a sudden, I had a vision in the, in the dream, in the sleep. All of a sudden, there were wild animals. In the, ah, this is me now. Wild animals, tiger, in the dream, and they were attacking. You understand? Know so at first, I was in a house watching them come, but the door was opened. So as they rushed, I closed <laughs> the door. But as I was trying to, you know how this, you know, when you, that's I'm telling you how the dream was. I was trying to hook the thing. It wasn't hooking. See, see what I like inside dream. Hook now, nah, it didn't hook. I saw the thing coming. Like, uh, uh, uh. Then all of a sudden, hallelujah. As I was trying to do this, I was like, all of a sudden, I just said, Femi, wait. That's not a wild animal. That's a demonic spirit. Then something rose up on my inside. In the name of Jesus, get out! Boom, power hit. Ah! Then I woke up. Because I heard the angel of the Lord say, wake up, start praying. I woke up, looked at my wife, looked at my kids, got up, went downstairs to the parlor, tongued for three hours. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, and during the time of prayer, during the time of praying in tongues, Rema was just coming out. Hallelujah. Words were coming out. Words were coming out. Words were coming out. Because I now had to go on the offensive. I had to go on the offensive. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Glory to God. It is via the word of God we apprehend. It is via the word of God we take possession. It's via the word of God we apprehend. It's via the word of God we take possession. So, just like with sword. Okay, wait, guys, have you watched, how many of you have watched, you know, movies, you know, that had to do with sword? I remember I watched movies. I like watching movies. Let me tell you my favorite sword movie. You want to know it? Favorite sword movie? It's called Ruanshin Kenshin. Yeah, Ruanshin Kenshin. You know Kenshin? You know Kenshin? Yeah. Is it Samurai X? No, it's not Samurai X. It's Ruanshin Kenshin. You know, if you are up close, about 40 years old, like myself, while you're growing up, you would have watched a cartoon on channel television called Kenshin. All right? Now, they've now adapted it for a movie, and it's on Netflix. The guy fights with a double-edged sword, so it's blunt, because he doesn't want to kill the person. But the guy is a bad guy. So I found out something, that what you can achieve... What a swordsman can achieve with the sword is not up to the sword. Ah, it is determined by the skill of the swordsman. The same sword in your hand, 
may not do the same thing with, you know, as the same sword in a skilled man's hands. So, if the word of God is a sword, we need to know and learn how to put this thing to work. If the word of God is a sword, it can cut out, cut out cancer. You now have to learn, how can I use this thing to do what? Cut it out. Glory to God. The word of God is what produced everything that you see and you can't see. It is via the word of God you can produce the job. Hallelujah. You can produce the home. You can produce the money. You can produce whatever it is you want to produce, the word. The word of God is a compeller. You will appear before people and because of the word that has been spoken, the person in front of you is compelled to help you. It will be as though they are under a spell. So I cannot explain it, but I know I have to help you. I know I have to give you the approval. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying here? The word of God. The word of God. Have you learned something today? Ah, Praise God. I will continue in the second service. Praise God. Amen. So listen. Learn how to put the word of God to work. So how do you do it? You discover what God has said. Amen. In the written word. Then what do you do next? You what? You what? You say it. You say it. The old timers had a practice. How many of you know about some things the old timers used to do? They would take a psalm and they would read the psalm. The time, I'm ever that. They would read psalm and stuff like that. They just take Psalm 91 and be reading it hundred times. And they got results. Do you know what they are doing? It's simple. They are just reading the word of God. They are quoting it. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. You understand what I'm talking about? And then we can say, ah, in the name of Jesus, I declare. Do you know that you can take the Bible and as you are reading it, you turn each verse to prayer points? Praise God. Should I show you? I think in two minutes. Turn your Bible to Psalm 91. Let me show you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 There are some pastors that don't know warfare. I've heard some people say, I know all this, all this, all this warfare, warfare, it's not all this warfare. It's complete. We are complete in Christ. Ah, (laughs) wajiao. You will suffer. Look, there are conversations with pastors we have. You are not in the conversation. Me, I'm telling you. You will suffer. Eh? You will handle spiritual warfare. You will uproot. You will release. You will burn down. Are you following what I'm saying? You will scatter. You will build in prayer. Glory to God. You will cancel programs. You will rewrite programs in prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. God won't do it for you. He says, I've given you all you need to do it. So do it. Glory to God. Enemies will plan accidents. You will cancel accidents. They will plan an explosion. You will cancel it. They will plan air crash. You will cancel it. Glory to God. They will steal from you. You will, be in prayer, you will get compensation. Ah. Because according to the scriptures, if somebody steals from a covenant person, he is supposed to return it how many times? Seven times. It is through prayer you will enforce it. It's a law. Seven times. Seven times. So Satan, you don't worry, it's seven times. Glory to God. The natural laws are spiritual laws. You will learn to wage war in prayer. You want to start a business? Prepare the ground in the spirit first with prayer. It is from that preparation divine ideas will come. Glory to God. You will find yourself entering doors nobody introduced you to. Why come one and they will like you? It's as though they were waiting for you. <laughs> Glory to God. You say, oh, we were just are so grateful. They will not be saying universe. Universe is one that brought you. You'll be smiling. <laughs> You know, universe brought me. You can say three. Lumu wa bi ba yo. Hallelujah. All right, time is fast, but I can't. I can't take this. Praise God, because we have to start the second service. Hallelujah. Praise God. I have to be disciplined if this is going to work. Can we lift up our hands to ourselves and I just bless the name of the Lord? Give Him all the praise. Talk in other tongues. Hallelujah. Talk in other tongues. Kabasu para hasa kadaye. Talk in other tongues loud, loud, loud. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. 
Let's hear you talk in tongues. Talk in tongues. So pada you de reo sapakata yi. Palakasata. Talk in tongues. Just talk in other tongues. Ah, la boso rukosudo rahaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash oikia cc. God has blessed you.